So ISIS and Saudi Arabia are one and the same? The same ideology. Same ideology. ideology. It's Wahhabi ideology. President Ali. Independent Islamic Republic. When Wahhabis pray, don't think they're praying for salvation or in the spirit of Islam. They're praying for someone's dreams. Previously, when Wahhabis prayed, it was for the dream of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to be fulfilled, to recruit for Wahhabi Salafis and engage them in the battlefields wherever America went. But today the game has changed. This prayer was done back during the early days of the Syrian war. Saudi Arabia emerged as the main group to finance and arm Salafist rebels. Saudi Arabia also backed Salafist rebel groups known as Jaysh al-Islam, Army of Conquest and many others. But everything changed when Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, walked into the picture and put all the Salafist preachers behind bars. And today, my friends, do you see them praying against Bashar al-Assad and his allies? No, because Saudi Arabia is on track to become an ally of Bashar al-Assad himself, thanks to Russia, China, Iran, and Syria. All of the Gulf Corporation Council states, the GCC along with Egypt, Iraq and Jordan have agreed to attend the consultative meeting in Saudi Arabia, Jeddah, with a single item on the agenda, that is, Syria's return to the Arab League. Mashallah. In practical terms, this means President Bashar al-Assad or someone representing him and very close will occupy the vacant Syrian seat at next month's Arab summit in Saudi Arabia. And most Arab and Gulf embassies in Damascus, Syria will reopen in the coming weeks. I did say this will happen folks and it's happening. The foreign ministers of the Arab states who accepted Saudi Arabia's invitation to attend won't be going there for consultation by the way, they'll have to accept what Saudi Arabia says and that is to give the stamp of approval for Syria's return. There's no ifs and buts. Syria will rightfully return to its place in the Arab League and all countries must normalize with Syria. The days of Wahhabism is over. Saudi Arabia, rightfully or wrongly, is pushing a reformist agenda. They no longer want to fund these Wahhabist Salafist groups anymore. And can you blame them? These groups are known to bite the hand that feeds them. They are referred to the dogs of hell after all by the Prophet Muhammad himself. And the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is worried about its security. So what's the option they have? to put Wahhabi scholars behind bars, the Salafists, and cut off the money supply. Good luck to them. Anyway, we digress. By bringing Syria back into the Arab League, the Saudi monarchy is also defying the Americans. And that's going to be a powerful slap on the face of the collective West and the United States of America. It's been going on for a little while, folks. Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, snubbed President Joe Biden when he visited Riyadh, rejecting his demands for an increase in oil production, joining forces with Russia and also hosting President Xi Jinping in Riyadh and most recently signing a reconciliation agreement with Iran under the blessings of Xi Jinping. Uh, the time has come for the international community to unite around a plan for post-Assad Syria. Take him out. Well, we hope they will. The Syrian opposition was uh, gathered together in Riyadh in an unprecedented move. They, all of the factions represented, they agreed on a platform, on a vision for Syria. They agreed on uh, what the new Syria should look like. And If you remember, it was the Americans who mobilized nearly 65 countries and spent $300 billion waging a proxy war in Syria in an attempt to bring down the Syrian democratically elected government. And now today, America faces a major multifaceted political and diplomatic defeat. The failure of its attempt to isolate Syria and now a revolt by Gulf states led by its biggest ally, Saudi Arabia. That's got to hurt. Syria's powerful comeback will break American influence in the region. And I believe Allah has given them victory because of Syria's righteous army, an army who has protected Muslims but also the Christians too. And of course, 
Syria has also chosen righteous allies like Iran and Russia. Alhamdulillah for the axis of resistance, it's truly progressing. At the Independent Islamic Republic, we do hope by welcoming Syria back into the Arab League, these Arab nations will continue to shun Washington and put Arab interests first. My friends, if you remember my previous channel, I got a lot of support for being on the right side, on the Syrian side, but also a lot of stick from Wahhabis who insulted me daily for my videos supporting Bashar al-Assad. But hey, my prayers have been answered and the Wahhabi prayers haven't. Maybe that's why people say never pray behind a Wahhabi Salafi because your prayers will never get answered. I hope these people reform and come out from their zombie-like state, chapter and verse, chapter and verse. Asalaamu As Alaikum, have a wonderful night. <laughs>